Be simple. Um, I'm a little older than you guys, and I lived through uh, agreements in my communities. Some, many of our communal agreements, which stem from our treaty, we saw what they did with them. We saw how they took our communal benefits from tobacco, and the province packaged them, handed them over to the chiefs. And instead of us having a right to trade tobacco to our best advantage, the chiefs were given a quota and said, okay, you manage this quota. At my reserves, most of the council have quotas. The rest of us get nothing. In gaming, it was the same thing. Our gaming rights stem from our communal benefits, our treaty rights under our communal benefits. Once again, the province stepped in and said, we're going to package this <clears throat> and we're going to give it to the, uh, to the chiefs to uh, administer and once again, in my community of Eskasoni Reserve, they run our uh, communal gaming uh, like mafia. And at some communities, I saw a letter last night from Acadia Band from a counselor who was begging forgiveness for having a gambling addiction and saying that within the next 27 months, they were going to pay back $180,000 to their band. So at my community, it's the same. The councillors and commercial fishery, in one day, all of us had a right to a modern livelihood, and then, uh, and then Mackenzie came in and took that away. So what my question is, how is this, how is this framework agreement going to be different from any of those other agreements? Because in the end, we're not going to have the final say on the final accord. Come on, folks, wake up. Who's going to have final say? <laughs>